and welcome to the Jake from State Farm subscribes to the 72 PC podcast for tier one. Thanks, Jake. Podcast. The only podcast where you can <laughs> join the conversation in the game. Uh, this Great week open. we have, yeah, this week we have Tom. I'm, I'm here. And more importantly, I've got a sleeve of Kit Kats, okay. an oatmeal cream pie. Nice. And Mott's assorted fruit fruit snacks. This man is wild. Unhinged. All right. What what have y'all got? Um, well, um, I got a Mr. Sure. <laughs> I have a, a tea. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh. That's it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any snacks prepared. I didn't know we were having snack time. Yeah. Neither did I. When Tom said he was going <laughs> to outdo me, I thought he was going to grab them and then eat them. <laughs> uh-huh. No, I'm just going to have them. They're just gonna sit here. We also I'll have eat some uh, during the cast, though. So <laughs> we also have Eric this week with snacks too. Apparently, well, I mean, I was a fat ass and ate almost all of mine before the cast, so I just had Mr. Good Bar. Oh, okay. And that's not that's that's after. That's Mr. Special. Nice. It's a Mr. Special, all right. <laughs> Mr. Special Bar. <laughs> yeah, if you left out, I'm snackless. I I don't know what to do. Man. I've got a couple of leftover snack. tacos in the fridge from earlier. Oh, Ooh. how were those? Huh? Good. How were they? Always. Oh, very good. They're fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think what's on the one. So the one is, so it's a hard shell and a soft shell with chorizo and queso in between. And oh, then it's fuck. got tequila lime steak <laughs> and uh, Mexican chimichurri and some other stuff on the top. Good it's it's God, good. That sounds it's really good. good. It's good. How it's, big is this? Is this like cheesy gordita crunch uh, size? Yeah, about like that. Yeah. Okay. With more, maybe more filling. Not a lot, but yeah, about that right. size. Yeah, it's good. Nice. It's real good. And then having, the other one is just like a traditional style. Having solid filling in the queso layer seems like that would feel kind of weird. I mean, it's just not that it wouldn't taste excellent. I mean, chorizo is like really small crumbles of meat yeah i, I and it's more it. it's more queso than chorizo okay oh. i uh we ordered mexican food the other day and they royally which is weird this place is usually spot on but they royally fucked up our order oh. and uh we oh. got bean dip and we never get bean dip we're not bean dip people but God, <laughs> this damn, is not a bean dip household. <laughs> exactly. Like there's, there's literally nothing in my life that I need bean dip for, but God damn, you had the taco meat and the beans and everything mixed together. And it was fucking delicious. Beans are underrated. Beans are good. I would never order a, a bean fan. dip. I've never ate a bean dip. I know. Like I usually just get the queso or, or some guac. Cause you can't yeah. go wrong with good guac. Oh man. Um, but yeah, bean dip, not really a thing I'm into. So sp- speaking of guac, this this place I got tacos from, they have different guacs you can choose from. There's a regular. There's a pico guac. So they just put pico de gallo in it, too. They yeah, have a pi- pineapple guac. Ooh. And um, there's one other. I can't think of it. Maybe that's it. Pineapple guac. But pineapple guac sounds good to me. I haven't tried it yet. Like it'd be creamy, sweet, but I th- I think the pineapple chunks in that would be a little odd to me. I don't know how I feel about pineapple guac. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I probably won't like it. I love pineapple, <laughs> but yeah, those flavors just do not seem to want to get to know each other. <laughs> okay. All right, okay, Andrew. Bash. Yeah. Ah <laughs> oh, shit. So what there was something I was on, gonna fellas? say. Do you guys have a nice Christmas? Oh, yeah. It's uh, I, did... I was gonna say it was relaxing. It was productive. That is the weirdest way I've That's ever. That's not heard what Christmas, Christmas is supposed tra- to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. supposed to be profoundly non-productive. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I I literally woke up yesterday. I'm like, you know, I feel like programming, and I spent <laughs> literally my entire Christmas, like aside from eating food and like playing the barest minimum of Beat Saber. Uh, I programmed for like nine and a half hours straight. Wow. Wow. It was it was all my own stuff. And it was it was nice. I, I built some stuff and uh, it's it's coming together. It's not quite done. I probably need 
two or three days more worth uh, worth of work on it to get it stable. But uh, it's getting there. Nice. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I just way. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We did another like five pound steak roast Ooh. thing, like prime ribish, but New York. So yeah, nice. it turned out real well again. And then, so Gina's parents got us all sorts of fucking snacks. And, you know, like the assorted candy shit, the assorted cookies shit, all real good. But they got us these a spare, a box of gummy bears. And it's like a crystal clear box. Like, oh, that's fancy shit. I'm like, but it's gummy bears. Mm-hmm. Like, why is it fancy? <laughs> and it's like mixed with champagne. Like the champagne used to make what? the syrup or something. Dude, best gummy bears I've had in my life. These things are fucking nuts. Really? Like, I, fancy I, gummy bears. Yeah, I, I don't want to know how much that cost. But at the same time, it was delicious. <laughs> I love a good gummy bear. I'm a big fan. That's that does amazing. sound good. It's a candy where I'll eat them when they're there. I believe that there is distinctions between good and bad, but yes. I'm not a huge like get out there and get like awesome gummy bears guy. I I just buy Haribo. I know they're not great, but they're there. I can always find them. I'm not going to break the bank buying Haribo gummy bears, but <laughs> but that said, you stay away from the sugar-free. I was about to say, don't get the sugar-free ones. Those are that is the most evil of evil. Yeah, that that's not real gummy bears. I mean, let's, okay. I put it in line with Diet Cola. At a certain point, acknowledge what you're doing is not good for you and just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, mean, I that's valid, use Diet I Cola as an excuse to eat some as people, many calories as I was going to drink. Some people legitimately which enjoy the taste. Which is not how it works at all, but... Some people drink Diet Cola for the taste, though. I get that, I but I think I those people are mainly just addicted child. to it. I don't, <laughs> it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I always had... So my grandpa would always get Diet Coke, and he'd drink half the can and give me the rest of it. Like, I don't care what advertising they try to do with bullshit of, oh, you can't tell the difference. No, nah, dude, you can it is you can, it's, it's different. It might not like, be even awful, but Max. it is not the same. Exactly. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I feel robbed by Irk. That goal was mine. But that's that's fine. Dude, that's, that's what how I get goals of, in Rocket League. Half of Eric's goals are just, <laughs> just getting just that steals. last little touch before it was already going into the net anyway. <laughs> I have always said half of my goals are shit Adam should have scored. <laughs> like, no lie. I have stolen more goals from Adam than I probably scored on my own. I should be at the top <laughs> of the leaderboards for assists by now because of Eric. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I also did some food stuff. Um, I I had a steak that was frozen since, Jesus, May. Like, it's it was buried in the back of the freezer. Like, and it was, this steak was rock fucking hard. Like there is, as, it was as just, things are. it was just a block of ice. That's it. And it's been in there since May. I thought, okay, this is not going to be good, but let's see if the sous vide can work magic. Um, and I dropped it in the, the vat of bubbling water at 139 degrees. I think it was whatever they, their recommended Remedial. thing was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, dropped it in there and left it in there from a frozen block with just some, like, seasoning dust in the bag. Two hours later, it was one of the most delicious steaks I have ever had. Um, nice. And uh, I finished it off by searing it in some avocado oil, which worked oh, really well. Fancy. So yeah, I had, had, a nice, had a nice little sear on it, uh, and it turned out great. Did you sear an avocado oil while you're having your avocado toast? You fucking hipster. I did not because I want to own a house one day. And we all know that if you buy avocado house, you are not legally allowed to own property. It's a strange <laughs> law, but uh, but that's the way it works. It's the also, law of millennials. Just yeah. a little something for you coming from a family that did a lot of beef. Um, dude, you can have frozen beef for like two years in a freezer and it's fine. As long as you have it in airtight packaging, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. It, it stays in the freezer for quite some time. Yeah, this was, I was a little worried about it. Like I've, I've thrown away stuff that was just in like butcher's paper. Cause clearly that's not going to keep. Um, but yeah. this one was in not a vacuum sealed, but one of the plastic wrap um, 
butcher packs like that they actually sit out on the shelf and it still turned out really good it wasn't vacuum sealed at all like it, it was not properly stored for that length of time okay um, um, so okay one one more question about how you sous vide are you vacuum sealing or are you zip locking and just trying to hug there out no no i'm i'm vacuum sealing i got okay. a super super fancy uh hand pump and i got some bags with uh reusable reusable bags with uh air holes that i stick this pump on and just furiously pump to get everything out um and that's that's it it's not perfect but it works well enough yeah i was just seeing because like i i i know that tends to be the two ways like if you're not doing one of those mm -hmm. two ways you're probably fucking up yeah but wait, wait hold on no, I'm just dropping the hunk of meat directly into the water. Is that not how you're supposed to do that? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. No, you're I mean, supposed like, to do that should... with milk instead of water. Oh, oh, my bad. My bad. Yeah. We should take well, I mean, it's like um, the idea of like, if you just throw it in a Ziploc bag and you don't try to hug the air out, you're not actually going to, um, the seasoning won't get as infused as much. Yeah. I have noticed and... that. I'm, I'm using way more seasoning in the sous vide than I would otherwise. And I, I kind of think that's because I'm not, you know, frying the whole thing in a pan together. Like, it seems to take more to get the same effect. But that might just be me. Maybe. I haven't noticed that as much, but I was doing bigger pieces, and I put, like, a half a jar of fucking minced garlic in there. <laughs> All right. I'm also using seasoning dust. Like, I've got ground onion, I've got ground garlic, I've got salt and pepper, so... Okay. Not Take it the next any next any time you're, like, shit. you're doing it. What you do, if you really want to up your game, get a jar of minced garlic. Yeah. It's super easy stores in the fridge. Use minced garlic. Use butter. Cut butter and put it in the bag with it. Ooh. And then also, good. if the only thing fresh to do, get a, get some thyme or thyme. I always say thyme. It's fucking thyme. thyme. Get, get, some, get some thyme. Put some thyme in there. It doesn't take much. Just do that and I'm telling you. Okay. You won't need as much. I, I did find that with garlic powder, I had to like empty a fucking jar to get it to work. Yeah, it, and like it's not bad, but it's definitely taking more than it would take if I was just like pan frying the thing. That yeah. said, holy shit, it's perfect every time. <laughs> and not only perfect, but like before when I had frozen steaks, I'd have to, you know, like leave that thing on the counter or put it in the fridge the night before. And, I, you know, I'm lazy and I can't plan anything uh so when i want steak it's usually uh like hmm i would like to have steak sometime in the next four hours i, I don't have time to plan for this shit i'm not gonna make steak tomorrow i want it now damn it uh and taking something from totally frozen fucking solid to a perfect medium is incredible it is goddamn culinary magic you'll start noticing you're gonna up your game you fr you buy meat you end up freezing it but you season it before you freeze it. Oh, that way, all you do this guy. is you just drop it in. It's it's excellent. So you and you vacuum seal and drop the whole goddamn mess in the freezer, and then you just take it out, throw it in for two hours, and you're done. More more that's like a, three because from frozen, but yeah. Oh, and that's that's the thing. It's I'm not doing any of these timings on my own uh, because I got the the stupid. <laughs> Stupid. I almost called it stupid. Sorry, wife. Stupid. Because I got the, the fancy <laughs> um, sous vide that has the app. Um, I'm not doing any manual timing calculations. I say, okay, well, how thick is the steak? Is it frozen or fresh? All right. Uh, drop it in now. Uh, and get it sometime in the next four years. It's like, all right, cool. I'm done. Yeah, I know you're not you doing timing yourself because you suggested two hours for a fucking frozen steak. <laughs> I, I mean, it was... It was an inch thick. It worked perfectly. It wasn't cold in the middle. Like it was, it was great. But um, also to something Scott or Dobby asked about real quick. Um, yes, if you put the seasoning of like chunks garlic and mint and uh, thyme and stuff in there, you need to get like a paper towel, rub it off, dry your meat before you sear. Like mm. get all that shit off of it that you can. Now, like some mints isn't gonna hurt. It's just that sh shit will toast. It'll burn a little bit and it'll get a little crunchy. Um, it's not awful. It's not the end of the world. But the more you take off, the better it will be. But um, wow, that was kind of a getting in technical waters. Um, <laughs> Remember who we are, actually, technically, 
a video game podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. speaking yeah. of video games, um, <laughs> I got me a Glenfiddich 15 for Christmas. Nice. Um, this is uh, this is part of their apparently Solera. Um, oh, sounds fancy. Line. And it's it's got a triangle bottle or a triangle uh, box tube, and and the whole damn thing is triangly. That's how um, you know this is fancy. Ooh, they gave you a partially neat. empty bottle. Refund that. I did. Uh, you know, I would, um, but I figured I'd just take it down the rest of the way and claim that um, it's a fully empty bottle. <laughs> mm. that, that, that's a really good scotch. It's fantastic. I, really I am I'm really liking this. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Eric games. Yeah. How, how uh you still enjoying Cyberpunk? How far are you? Um so I'm enjoying Cyberpunk. So there's something I don't know if we talked about on the cast I've noticed about this game. The way they tell the narrative and story, have I talked about how like missions don't feel disconnected? How mission one mission kind of flows to the next, flows to the next, and mm -hmm. unless you make a conscious decision to stop a storyline, you just complete it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really discussed that already. No. Yeah, so you mentioned it briefly. I've, okay, yeah, I, I've noticed that a lot, and I've really been digging it. Um, yeah, there was something else I was going to call out about the game that I noticed recently, and I don't remember what the fuck it was. But T yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't seen that kind of bug. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. It's great. No, I, that was I one of the first things I saw playing the game. <laughs> it's like yeah. getting into this new area. Oh, there's an NPC <laughs> T pose there. Okay. Haven't seen the old T pose in the wild in, in quite some time. <laughs> a wild T pose has appeared. Yes, but um, no, I'm, I'm still playing it, still digging it. Um, it's a good game, in spite of itself. It's a good game. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. I don't think I really have too much to bring up about it. I finished the main story. Or did I? Did oh. I? Talk, did I finish it before the last cast, or was that? I thought it was after the last cast. God, we it are was great after. at this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, um, so what do you what do you think? Like did you I enjoy the story? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I liked where they went with the story. Um it, I it didn't end up feeling rushed. Um I mean I I sorta of rushed the game anyway, so I don't didn't really notice personally, you know. But um like I I did Maybe I did a couple of side quest lines all the way through, and that's about it. So I didn't do a ton of the side quests. I pretty much just focused on the main story. Um, and then, of course, after I beat it and I got the ending that I got, I went through to look at all the endings that are possible. And I was actually pretty pleased with the ending I got compared to some of the other ones. There were, there were some endings I really just didn't like at all. And then there were a few that I was like, all right, that makes sense, you know, without spoiling anything, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the fact that I actually played all the way through the main story kind of attests to uh, how much I enjoyed the game. And like you said, in spite of itself. So those these types of games, I'm speaking generically here. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I say this type of talk like GTA. Once you beat the game, you typically Ooh. still dick around and play a lot. Um, uh, not you, but I mean player in general. What about you? Were you done with Night City when you finished the story, or did you still want some more? Um I I haven't played it since since I finished the main story. But I did make sure that the game is still installed on my machine. So if I'm bored one day and I don't know what to play, you know, there's always that option of jumping back. Even if I just wanna, you know, chill out and drive around and look at Night City, you know, that's an option. But all right. uh, as Which, for right now, I feel way, I feel right. satiated with with Cyberpunk. So like I'm good. You know, maybe maybe down the line I might get bored and play another side quest line or something. But uh, I'm I'm pretty pleased with where I'm at with it. I'm not a completionist though, so that's also part of just my personality. I'm kind of a completionist, but that's not what kept me in GTA. It's just like I enjoy driving around, killing people, doing high stuff. And the AI with the cops, I think, breaks that. If the AI with the cops yeah. was better, I think yeah. maybe that would be more enjoyable. For sure. Because it was the same thing with um, uh, Saints Row. 
we would like see how much fucking havoc we can cause and still get away without dying. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really a thing you can do in Cyberpunk. Yeah. Not really. Which is a shame because with like all that fancy tech, they could have done some really cool shit with the cops. Yeah. Yeah, the fancy tech applies to everything except the AI, as it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and especially the driving. Like, there's literally no driving AI. If like if you ever wondered why you can't um take a taxi or anything like that, like you can in GTA, but you can ride around in cars for story missions, uh, it's because the story missions are actually perfectly scripted driving. Mm -hmm. um it is not a general purpose system there is no ability right now for the cars to intelligently pathfind their way to a place for you um they'll drive and they'll try to avoid hitting things but if you like push on that system at all like if you try to cause traffic the cars will just pile up and stay there they they <laughs> literally are the dumbest thing in the waiting world. yeah so I've also noticed with some of the AI, I don't want to say it's not even AI, but mechanisms in the game, they do some of the artificial stress to the player that's bullshit. Um, so there's a chase scene where you're shooting out the back of a van to try to get people to not follow you. Mm. I wanted to see what would happen. I didn't shoot at all. Everything turned out fine. Yeah. The car <laughs> floated off because of other reasons and everything was fine. Yeah, but that's on it's you. Like, that sequence was cool. That was such a cool sequence. That was cool. I loved that. No, I was just, I was just testing it though. Yeah. Um, just like um, I, I saw this with Gears of War four. I had a thing where like, oh, you have to do this so fast, otherwise you're gonna die. And I literally didn't do anything, didn't move, and it just <laughs> kept looping and looping and looping. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I dislike that. I'm okay with you putting a player under stress. Make it mean something. Yeah. I mean, they could at least just throw like a fail state in if you exactly proceed and then you to not do right anything like you did. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's I a say fair that. fair criticism, I guess. I didn't personally mind, but then again, I'm also the asshole. That, I get it. Well, most people don't notice. I just yeah, like to not. test those kind of systems. I'm always wonder. I'm like, hmm, do you actually need to do what they're telling you to do? Mm -hmm. Or is this what they're telling you to do so it feels awesome, but in reality, you're on rails and it doesn't give a shit? I need to see... I haven't tested it in a while, but I need to see if they fix the Hand of Jesus bug, um, which, by the way, is one of my favorite bugs ever. Um, you walk up to a person in a wheelchair in Night City, and you punch them, and then they can walk again. <laughs> <laughs> it's... No way. It's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 okay, I had no clue where you're going with that. I'm like, yeah, like I was a like, oh, no. the hand joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you literally you heal paralyzed people by punching them in Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> it's uh, it's a great Jesus simulator. I don't know why it has an M rating. Like this is something that every child should do. You should have an H rating. <laughs> you don't even have to have like fist modifications to to pull that off. Yeah, no, just. It's just the you don't need, of Jesus power. You don't need to go to the <laughs> Ripper, Doc. Doc, I need the fists of Christ. <laughs> you walk now. <laughs> the fist of Christ compels you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm hoping that... Because a CD Projekt Red is not is not new to having buggy games. When The Witcher 3 first released, it was kind of... like it's, It wasn't nearly this bad, but it was certainly buggy. Um, mm -hmm. I and they have leaned into it like Roach, your horse, would sometimes spawn on top of buildings. So in Gwent, um, when when they released the standalone Gwent, Roach's card was just him standing on top of a fucking barn, and Daryl's sitting there like, "What the fuck, man? How did you get up there?" Um, so they really do embrace the bugs and make references to it. I would like to see a Fist of Christ power up or item that you can get that <laughs> would cause people in wheelchairs to stand up after you hit them once the the game is fixed or even a shirt that just shows someone punching someone out of a chair yeah. and then shows them standing <laughs> like they they are they are no strangers to referential content hell like the the stuff you get in your apartment you get like Geralt's like leather jacket and a shirt with the witcher logo on it like they are not afraid of throwing in stuff like that uh, and i i would like to see more of it Oh, I did stumble into my first sex shop. And Ooh. holy shit, that stuff is awesome. You can buy it. It's a little bit inappropriate. 
<laughs> yeah, like um, I, I. Now that I'm not afraid to watch the game, I want to pull up some streams to see what the fuck streamer mode looks like in this game because I was going to say sex is I, everywhere. I wondered um, like how would the I've actually that would fly that streaming that game. Um, I I turned that on. So before you start the game, and this is this is a little annoying because you have to turn it on before you load the save file. Um, but you can turn on a nudity filter, and basically it just puts in a, a blur. Um, okay. Anytime someone is nude, um, and then of course the copyright music filter, which is a separate option, um, it works well enough. It works well enough that I felt comfortable streaming it on Discord to a couple people the other night. Um, I had to back out, and because I, I'm not going to play a game with intentional censorship if I'm just watching it on my damn screen in my damn house. Um, but streaming it, yeah, I backed out, set the options, reloaded the save, and that was it. Also, I want to say this. If you are going to put a mode in your game where you can rip out the copyright music, A, smart because licensing down the future, but allow me to plug my own music into it then. I it's not that like, far of a stretch. This is going to be a weird argument. I kind of like that they didn't. Um, because I think the music in Cyberpunk 2077 really does fit the world well. Believe it or not, as cool as it would be, I don't want to hear Danger Zone or or Boston yeah. <laughs> uh, roaming around Night City. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit I, more yeah. immersive. I, I so, agree with the premise of I want to hear the OG soundtrack a good while at first, but eventually mm -hmm. I'll get to the point where like, dude, let me throw on some Offspring, chill out, because I'm going to listen to Offspring anyway, and I want to make sure I can hear the quest lines while I'm listening. Maybe they make it a uh, like an end game on Lockball. Like you have enough street cred, you can buy headphones or something. Um, which is one thing that I really wish more open world games did. Uh, in Saints Road, you had the ability to turn on the radio even if you were outside of your car. And in Cyberpunk, I'd be sitting there like fucking head banging, like damn, this is a fucking riff, man. And then I'd get out of my car, I'm like, all right, let's go kill some fools. And it's just like the ambient sounds of nothing in Night City. It's like, oh, well, that. It kind of sucks. Yeah, but I if wish, I, I wish I could buy like a big during, ass can, just but, rock out all the time. The inverse is sweet though. Like if you're doing a badass mission, shooting some people up, then you get in the car and you just get this hard ass metal music or something. It's like, yeah, that's, that's fucking right. That's yeah, true. that's already a station in there though. <laughs> but it's not. It's yeah. a very. Um, I was surprised by the metal radio station in that game. It was very Good much surprise, more. Um, not of it, not all of it was really my thing, but I was surprised at how like into it that was like it was like it didn't hold like, back in any video game. If you have a metal radio station, it's usually like a type of metal that is even if it is all like the screaming vocals and stuff. Like it's usually a little more like I don't know what how to describe it, but there's like a, a type of metal that is a little more easily enjoyed by like a Palatable. wide audience yeah and then there's a type that is like burning churches in norway and that, <laughs> that was the type of metal that was in the game it surprised me i uh, uh, i do enjoy the metal station i haven't found a station in there that i really dislike other than the um the last one which is kind of more of a what feels like classic rock to me but i'm sure that's wrong oh I really I like the chills. So I like the, the chill one. I liked the um the chill one's good. is it is it night fm? What's like the default like the first I think night fm it's got, is it. It's got I the really chill ambient like electronic music and then occasionally I would uh jump it over to the jazz station. The first channel is like the West Coast West Coast Dream West Coast Yeah, West Coast Dream I think is what they called it. Something like uh, that. Uh, it wasn't that one then. I think it was night fm. Uh, Either way, uh, but um, aside but, yeah. from aside from the why we're on the subject of music, aside from the like the actual radio songs, but the the score for the game, like the actual OST, wow. is so good, incredible. Like everything from like the cutscene music to the like the the fighting music and the combat zone music, like those are really good, and I, I really really especially especially like um. I think it's called Johnny, like the name of it is Johnny's Theme. 
but there's a part where it sounds almost like a cello, but I'm pretty sure it's an electric guitar being played with like a, an actual bow that you would play with like a violin or a cello with. So it really? has this like, it what sort of fuck? sounds, it sort of sounds like a cello, but it's also a little more like screechy, like a guitar can be. It's just got a really cool tone. Um, but yeah, that like in combination with all the, like the industrial and the electronics and the synths and stuff, it just, it creates a really cool uh, mood and atmosphere that fits the style of the game and is really, really nice to listen to. I'm I'm super happy that CD Projekt Red was able to just fucking unleash. Mm. Um, one of the issues with building a game like The Witcher or like Skyrim is uh, most of the time, if you're trying to fit within those aesthetic circles of a standard fantasy RPG, you're pretty limited like, in what right. music you can create. We're going right. to have a loot, and then there's going to be some yeah, opera exactly. uh, choir, and then there's going to be some strings. Maybe maybe you get some war drums. Like, yeah, a couple drums in there. Maybe a horn song or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in, in this, where it's a futuristic society, you can have any music you want. So, yeah, do you want hard synth bangers? Cool. Do you want smooth jazz that somehow still feels futuristic? Yeah, you got that, too. Dude, the, the, the chill jazz at nighttime when it's raining in Night City, just driving around. That's a good it's time. It's so good. It driving is, it feels is just, bad. I'm just going to keep saying bad. that. I'm just going to keep saying that. But I have really enjoyed my time, even with the driving feeling bad, getting on a motorcycle, zipping through traffic, and chilling to some tunes while it's raining in Night City. Like, goddamn, that is, that is where it's Mot at. Motorcycle is the only way to get anywhere fast. Because yeah. it is so hard to weave in between traffic with a yeah. car. I oh, didn't like the motorcycles, though. Really? I was car all the way, yeah. Okay. It's just so slow, or you have to acknowledge I'm going to hit a lot of vehicles. I just think yeah. it like it looks bad when you have yes. the character model on the motorcycle. Yeah. I couldn't get into it. Well, the, the bikes look bad in general. Like mm -hmm. Even without the character model, I don't think they look good. I think they but. look fine. They're not amazing, but they look fine. I wish... Uh, I don't, it's bad by design to me. Like, I don't think that okay. what they tried to do, what they did wrong. I just think what they tried to do, they did, and they did well. I don't think they look good. Fair enough. I wanted to make that distinction and not in the way of like, oh, they're buggy, they're low poly. No, no, yeah. they look fine. I just don't like the way they look. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, I think everybody's ah. pretty much on the same page with Cyberpunk. The yeah. past few weeks, everything seems pretty consistent as far as consensus yeah. goes. Uh, Jake from State Farm just released his Cyberpunk video uh, about an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Oh, cool. Um, and it sounded a lot like the same lines of us and everyone else of, hey, this thing's buggy as shit. There was issues. He actually breaks down a lot of the stuff we was talking about the last few weeks of like the um development issues and all that kind of shit and he does a really cool thing of comparing it to other games that released this year oh nice of like being revolutionary being pretty doesn't mean you run like shit on console yeah <laughs> shit red That's dead true. redemption yeah. 2 is still one of the most goddamn beautiful games i have ever seen and that thing yeah. runs crisp and the last of us 2 same thing and the last of us 2 which i yeah. i gotta say though like okay last of us 2 it's a linear action game for the most part, right? Yeah. Um, it's a linear yeah. action stealth game. It is, technically speaking, in different game systems, it is fairly easy to be able to push something into a pretty direction mm -hmm. if you know what your player is going to be looking at and you yeah. know where they are. In an open world game, it is much more technically complex to make something look cool. Which is yeah. why I don't really call out The Last of Us, because of course it's going to look good. It's a linear action game. Where something like Red it's on rails. Look, yeah. yeah. Where Red Dead, has, Red Dead has to look good no matter what. That's true. Yeah, any kind of open world, you're going to have to deal with the fact that the player is going to be looking at a lot of stuff at the same time. Yeah. So. In Red which Dead, I, I've heard the, without glitching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think the term for that um, is, is it ocular occlusion? Where basically, wherever the player is looking, it will make sure that it renders anything within field of view, but anything mm. you're not currently yeah. looking at isn't rendered. 
Um, and then and that's, there's that's the key. and then there's um, what's it called? There's another kind of occlusion where um, it's like not just only rendering what's in your field of view, but if there's something blocking something else, it won't render what's behind your lot that line of sight. Yeah. Yeah, they don't do that in Cyberpunk. I know that because of the tree glitch I get, even after <laughs> updating my drivers. Was that um, the one where the, the tree is like melt and like bend down into the no. ground and stuff? Because <laughs> I These saw trees that bug and fantastic. I can be in a room with no windows and I'll see the trees that are outside. Oh. <laughs> and it's not bullshit trees. Oh, like if you go outside, great. they're exactly where they are. They're uh. just rendering through the fucking walls. <laughs> uh, so you... Cyberpunk is doing that because um, they so there's probably a bug in the way they're drawing the trees and what layer they end up on, but they are doing it because otherwise, when you were inside of a building, all of Night City would be rendering through the walls. Mm -hmm. So it does still happen. They still have that tech. It's just uh, buggy, you know. Well, you know what I'm getting. Like, it's yeah. either they're deciding to render the trees and they're saying that they're in the foreground, or somehow the trees are just. I guess either way, that's still that base issue. Yeah. But fuck it. <laughs> fuck that. Um, um, also, shout out to Jake. Go check out that video. It was really well done. He put a lot of time into it. And it it's really, really good. The um, the other thing to... I just completely lost it. Never mind. Aha! Hey, ha, I, yes. I thought I was going to have a point there, and I didn't. So, <laughs> I mean, that's it's typically okay. how you... Yeah. 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 That's all right. We'll, uh, we'll get to that later, maybe. <laughs> Or or some other time. Or not. Yeah. Not ever. Maybe. It's optional. Oh, yeah. Cyberpunk system can go a little too far sometimes. Like, if you've ever been... If you've ever passed a car on the highway, and we talked about this a little bit last time, and you turn around because you want it, <laughs> it won't be there. So sometimes yeah. it's yeah. not even that they aren't rendering what's outside of your field of view. It's once something leaves your field of view, once something leaves rendering distance, it's it no really longer it. exists in the world. <laughs> like, reality... <laughs> doesn't exist for except what you can see like this is this is a philosophy student's wet dream right here it's yep. like well what is reality except for perception and if we don't perceive <laughs> it doesn't exist if a cool car in night city drives past you and you're not looking at it does it even exist and no. the answer is no answer is <laughs> it does not exist <laughs> it goes into the idea of the world is my world it's not anyone else's <laughs> world so if i don't know you you don't actually exist exactly there are people that seem to think that way but let's let not get into that um <laughs> what else have you guys been playing this week uh um, i got back into beat saber beat saber yeah, yeah. dance and tom is beat back saber. the return um all all of the mods are so broken custom songs work but all my filtering is broken i don't have my favorites list anymore so i had to go through and manually look through a thousand songs to add them to the new favorite system uh, which is integrated with the game so it's going to be better but um yeah right now everything is fucking broken i can't set high scores on custom songs um like it's it's kind of tragic um luckily i do have an old version of beat saber backed up so if things don't get online soon i'll just revert and play the old stuff um so how oh, yeah. out of shape did you feel getting back into it? Oh, God. <laughs> Your yeah, body well, burn. <laughs> so believe it or not, it didn't take me all that long to get back into it. But that first day, man. Oh, my God. Everything fucking hurt. So um, <laughs> I, um, I only did a half an hour the first day. Second day, I did about 45 minutes. Third day, I went for an hour and a half. So... Didn't take me too long to get back into the swing of things, but those first couple of days were rough. Um, I, I noticed the game in its latest update runs a lot smoother. A whole hell of a lot smoother. They must have done some optimizations there because That's before good. it wasn't it wasn't ever jittery, right? Beat Saber is not a hard game to run, but it, you could feel a little bit of lag or pull on the system when notes were, were popping in. This everything is just buttery fucking smooth. Um, so yeah, they're they're doing great things. It's just unfortunate that all the mods are broken all the time. Um, I well, you don't have that because it's third party mods. That that's what hurts. Exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, Beat Games does not publish these mods. They don't publish any modding guides that I'm aware of. They just kind of launch the game and say, "I don't know. Good luck, guys." Um, 
Which legally, better. probably better because yeah, if they start to say. address mods, they're legally going to be responsible for mods. Exactly. So leaving it there and having the community figure it out is better for us. So I'm not really going to complain about that. Um, so the big headlining feature for this latest re uh, major update was uh, multiplayer. And you could always do multiplayer with a series of hacky mods in Beat Saber, uh, but this is built into the game itself. Uh, they've got quick play, they've got um, join server by code, you can set up a server and invite people, uh, and Smiggle and I were playing it. It is fucking seamless. It is, nice. That's it great. is fantastic. You load up, everybody hit like has their ready or not. You can select like a beat map that you would like to play, and then it just runs through and picks one of them. Um, usually, the community is kind of centered around when one person picks a map, the rest of you pick the same map, and you just take turns. Um, so everybody gets to play what they want. The bad news is that in Beat Saber's official multiplayer, nobody gets to play what they want because nobody actually wants to play the default tunes. Custom songs do not work in multiplayer because to make that, you have to literally copy uh, or send a potentially pirated music off to other people's machines, which they don't want to be in the business of doing. So um, I'm sure a mod will fix that one day, but right now, yeah, it's just it's just defense. And once a mod does fix that, that's still going to be kind of finicky because you're going to have to like, okay, if someone doesn't have this song, they're going to crash out or something like yeah. that. Yep. Um, or, or what they could do is if you've got uh, if you've got the mod installed, but you don't have the song. This is what the old Beat Saber multiplayer did. It just says, "Hey, here's this ID. Go grab it," um, and your game would automatically pull the latest song. It was actually a great way to share libraries because you could say, "Hey, uh, we're playing this song. Wait, no, I meant this one. Oh no, I meant this one. Oh no, you have three new songs. How did that happen? That's so weird." Um, but yeah, you can you can do a couple different signaling things to to figure out what should go where. Um, so I'm I am tentatively excited about that prospect. Um, yeah, that that would be really nice if it ends up working. So so visually, how the multiplayer used to work in the mod is it would literally just put stages next to you, and you would have to look over to the right and the left to see people you were playing against. Um, and you could see the blocks coming towards them, which depending on the amount of players you had in the session could start to lag you out. Um, with the official one, everything is super low res. You can still see stuff flying at people, but now they're offset at other angles. So they're kind of in your field of view, but far enough away that they're not distracting. Um, and the person in first place gets like a big holographic projection of themselves, unless you're the one in first place. So if you see somebody pop up, you know you're getting your ass kicked, and you get a, you better get back in the game, um, okay. which is neat. So I was, uh, I was playing, stunting on some kids, got stunted on a few times. It was a good feeling. Nice. Playing maps that you probably haven't played in three years. Exactly. I haven't played these maps, some of them ever, because a lot of this is like content packs and uh, DLC that I just never bought until now. The Beat, Sa the Beat Saber multiplayer update actually pushed me to... Uh, by most of the music packs that they have. So, I'm so torn on this because I feel it's the right thing to do. I feel it's the best way to approach it is have music packs, same way that um, like Rock Band did. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can do that all you want, and you still can't stream this shit. So what's... Yeah. yeah. I mean, granted, that's not a deal breaker for a lot of people. But it's still a really weird thing where in this game you're spending extra money for things that you still can't express and show others legally. Yeah. I this needs to be figured out. And I, I was gonna comment on that with Cyberpunk, but I didn't want to get into a rabbit hole. This thing needs to be figured out by streaming companies, right? Whether whether it's like extra money in Spotify or paying to be exempt or something, something has got to give. Because right now, I can't stream Cyberpunk as it was released, as the devs intended, uh, for multiple reasons, right? Nudity being probably the main one, um, but copyright music is also a concern. And then Beat Saber, I can't stream fucking at all. And if I'm going to play GTA V online, like, I, I don't know, do I just, like, find a classical station? But <laughs> even then, that's not exempt from copyright. Like, how do you fucking win? You don't. Know. 
Yeah. And and you mentioned streaming services figuring it out. It's also like not really them. It's more so the yeah, the, the music wall. publishers and labels and um the companies in charge of keeping track of royalty dues and stuff. I feel like like we need changes to copyright law to say, hey, yeah. this isn't a performance if you're doing something else, right? There, nobody goes to Twitch and watches me play Beat Saber and says, aha, I'm going to get my tape deck out and I'm going to record this Millennium <laughs> song and I'm going to listen to it forever without giving them a dime, right? No one fucking does that. You've got me yeah. like huffing and puffing in the background. You've got like boxes and notes and sound effects over top of shit. Like... If you're gonna listen to the song, you're either gonna go to YouTube and watch it with an ad blocker, um, <laughs> or uh, you're just gonna use Spotify or whatever streaming service. Right? Like, mm -hmm. I, to me, this shit seems pretty easy, but copyright law is archaic and has been broken for a long time. Yeah, well, streaming didn't exist when <laughs> most of those laws were made, so it, you know, I, the internet didn't exist when yeah, most exactly. of these laws were made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, and, and the fact that we have the Millennium <laughs> Copyright Act to, to put up with now uh, says that we're clearly getting the worst of both worlds. Yeah, kind of. Oh, yeah, that sucks. That rabbit hole's been downed. Yep. Yeah. Um, Adam. Yep. The only thing I I've want been you playing. To talk. Yeah. The only other thing I've been playing besides uh, finishing Cyberpunk has been Escape from Tarkov, which had a big update. And. As they do, usually when there's a huge update, they wiped everybody's progress to zero. So everybody starts from scratch all over again. Um, so the reason they do this, I, we've talked about this on the cast before, but it's been a little bit. The reason they do this is because the, the, the game's still in basically a testing phase, right? They call it beta, but it's really an alpha. Um, so they'll make some, some big sweeping changes, reset everybody from the beginning so that they can monitor all the metrics from those changes and see how the game plays out, you know, from the beginning to the mid game to the end game. And then um, the next time there's a big, huge update, they'll usually wipe it again. So this usually happens every, I'd say on average, I'm guessing they're every like six months. Some of them are shorter. Some yeah, I've have been longer than that, but roughly I've six months. Two, and I've had it for about a year. Yeah. Um, so this one, I'm not going to get into all the like patch notes and stuff because we're not a Tarkov podcast, but uh, they added a lot to one of the maps, Woods. Um, they basically made the map more than twice as large, so there's a whole lot of new area to explore. Um, the map is really great. It, I think it massively improved the map. Um, they added some guns, uh, different new mechanics and stuff, new items, just... Just a, and then they also made big changes to like all the gun attachment stats and stuff. So a lot of stuff really got reworked in a way that they're going to need to, you know, monitor everything and test it. But yeah, it's been fun starting over again. I know that sounds like in most games, it sounds like starting over would just be a drag. Like, oh my God, like you're really going to do all that again after all that progress just gone. But I think that in the state of the game now, most people, once you get to a certain point, you're kind of ready for more content to grind to towards. Because once you get to the end game of Tarkov, your options for progressing are either A, making more money, which at that point you often have enough that you're not going to spend anyway. And B is um, basically focusing on PvP combat, which after a while can get a little stale. So... Yes, because yep. everyone's running the same guns the same way because yep. it's the meta. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people agree, not everybody, but a lot of people agree that like that early wipe, you know, fresh start few weeks of the, the new update is usually like the best and most fun time to play because there's just so much variety and like what equipment people have that you run into and everybody's got goals that they're they're pushing towards and it's just a good time. Almost so, everyone's running, like Adam said, objectives, and that makes it so much different because you know where people are going to mm -hmm. be funneling. Yeah, yeah, you, you know there are, there are other more hot spots. Um, the the economy itself is more dynamic because you know certain quest items are going to be more expensive on like the the market. Um, depending on the time of the wipes, like cer certain items are really expensive as soon as the update hits, and then over time they'll get you know cheaper and cheaper. And then other items will be, you know, basically worthless in the beginning. And then towards the end game, it's like, you know, everybody's got a bunch of money to spend and those items get crazy expensive. So 
um, yeah, it's just it's just a lot more dynamic and a lot more varied, and it's fun. I'm having a great time with it. I want to comment on a couple of the things you said. Sure. First, just in general about the wipe. Yeah. So typically in the wipe, they give notice, and there's like a week long event where everything's cheap. They're yeah. Giving yeah. They're able to let like <laughs> unlock everything so everyone can just have fun. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. Was this a was podcast. a. <laughs> there was a podcast Wednesday morning. And it was pretty much saying within 24 hours, there's going to be a wipe. Yep. Here's what we're doing. Yep. And it was awesome because I was and I was watching it. And as soon as he said that, I went to the Discord. And I'm like, I think Nikita just said there's going to be a wipe. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah. I think the last one before this, they announced uh, either one week. I think it was about a week before they decided to do it. So like for a week, it was just the thunderdome right like everybody is just <laughs> spending all their money running the best gear they can with the sole purpose of just like fighting other Kill. players you know it basically turns into call of duty with extra steps at that point um <laughs> but but i mean that is really fun you know as an event and then you know a week later everything just gets reset and everybody plays you know tarkov like like tarkov's meant to tarkov. be played uh, but yeah, this time they were just like, oh, by the way, tomorrow, yep, yep, everybody's starting over. <laughs> so they made they made the trader prices really cheap for one day, and we had one day of Call of Duty with extra steps, and, and then everybody got reset. And keep I, in mind, when they did a week that. event, they also, like, leading into yeah, that they week event, everyone's stuff. thinking, like, hey, that wipe's coming soon, that wipe's coming soon. This one just punched everyone in the face. <laughs> like, there was no anticipation. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people were disappointed because they were like really grinding towards something and then maybe they got that something and then the next day they don't get to enjoy that something because it's all gets reset anyway. So I do feel Pesley, for those people because that's got to suck. Pesley was on day three of a series he was calling Grinding for Kappa. Yeah. <laughs> like he had just started this whole series and they're like, nope, nope. we're resetting. Nope. Start the series over. I saw pictures of people getting like ridiculously rare ridiculously expensive items like the day before everything gets reset and it doesn't matter anyway <laughs> like oh. somebody found a red key card and it was just like i hate this game <laughs> <laughs> uh, for some perspective tom um i know you don't play a lot and you don't know a lot about the economy but the red key card was going for roughly 20 some million Jesus. rubles all right so yeah yeah Maybe more. I can't and, remember how much it got up to, but. And the woods expansion. I do want to call this out because people are just like, oh, it's a new, it's a bigger map, whatever. So woods is actually a pretty prevalent map in Tarkov because there's a good bit of questing you have to do on it mm -hmm. in a mid to early game. And you'll learn to hate the map because it's a smaller map, a lot of snipers, thermals wreck everyone. And there's not a lot of, and I mean, it's, not a, lot of trees. it's not a smaller map. It's about this. It feels it, it feels it feels I think bigger than it is just because it's such an open like foresty area. But um, now it is a massive map. It's huge. But it gives you room to play because also mm -hmm. the thing the way they played the map a lot of snipers with thermals and it would just wreck people. Mm -hmm. But um, this I think will help with a lot of those quests, especially for the Jaeger lines, mm -hmm. to where they don't feel as bad. It's not as much of a slog that damn it I have to play woods again. Mm -hmm. so let's be honest most people hated woods yeah there were there was a subset of players that enjoy woods for like the player versus player combat because there's not really a lot of loot on the, the map so if you're not focused on fighting players or like the the bosses in the map um, there's not a lot to like do you can't really make money on woods you know uh, but now yeah. there's all kinds of loot on woods and a bunch of new areas and buildings and stuff so it's actually like a viable, just like straight up play it however you want kind of map. Oh, that's Which nice. cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah, Tarkov. It's it's been great. I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah, I even got in and got a few raids in. We did. We had some good raids actually. We didn't have a. Yeah. I don't think how many did we play one or two? We, we did played two a scav. PMC. We, or we oh, did okay. a scav and a PMC. Scav and I did PMC. two PMCs. Our PMC run was really good though. And I've I've long. been having I've been hitting uh, some crazy luck so far, um, on some of my tasks trying to get them done, because when when everybody is trying to get the same tasks done at the beginning of the wipe because everybody's at the same you know level of the game, it can be crazy because 
you know, everybody has the same task to get this item from this same area and get out with it. So that area becomes a nightmare and, and people have a lot of hard time. But some of these early tasks, I just got done on the first try without any hiccups. So I feel like I kind of hit the lottery. Like the, the infamous yeah. task of getting the bronze pocket watch. Like I got it on the first try <laughs> with no problems. And then I like killed a guy that had another item I needed for a task. And it's always a pain. So that was like a twofer. And then I did another task today that's usually really difficult because you have to get three kills with a pistol. And I got all three of those in the same raid. Like everything has just been going really smooth. And I'm ready to just. Bastard. Yeah. I feel like I'm overdue to just get destroyed repeatedly <laughs> for, <laughs> you know, the next week or something. And I also want to call out about Tarkov from the last patch. They introduced something called heavy bleeds. So there's two different types of bleeding now. There's light bleeding, which is what used to be the standard bleeding, and heavy bleeds that people can actually track you with. And it takes a different type of bandage to actually stop. Man, that's actually kind of changed the way I load out my kit when I'm going now. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to add some extra shit to it. I, I really you, like that mechanic. Yeah, you kind of have to think of what what meds you're bringing in and how because there are like there are some things that can stop a heavy bleed or heal you like normal but then when it stops the heavy be bleed it uses a lot of the um resource from that that med and then there are other items that only stop heavy bleeds and don't do anything else so you have to kind of balance you know how much space am i dedicating to you know medical items on me when i go into a raid and which ones am i going to take and, and it makes scav encounters yeah. much more intimidating because all of mm -hmm. a sudden they give you a heavy bleed like that's a fucking death sentence if you can't handle it mm -hmm. yeah it adds just another extra dynamic i think to the combat that makes it feel a little bit more survival and a little bit less call of duty yes and i welcome that i do too yeah so yeah uh, all right that's tarkiv tarkiv Tarkiv. Tarkiv. Escape from Tarkov. Also, they're having sales right now, so if anybody's actually wanting to buy it, I think you can get it on sale until like the new year or something. And this is the time to pick it up. Fresh wipe. Get in there yeah. on the early days. Escape from Turkiv. Escape from Turkiv. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Escape uh, from it's Thanksgiving. Well, um, God damn it, Tom. Um, I see you got Pavlov on your list. Anything specific you want to talk about, or you just have it there to play it? Um, yeah, no, not not a ton there. Um, I uh, I have been every time I play Tark or Tarkov. Oh my God, what have you done it's to me? Turn curve. <laughs> Everything is uh, Tarkov. Uh, most of the time when I'm playing Pavlov now, um, I will intentionally. That's going to end up being a weird sentence. I will play with intent. <laughs> you know what? You can play a multiplayer I, game. I really <laughs> play with intent. Were you about to say that? It, yeah, intentionally play with intent. Yes. I, I was about to say that, and so I changed it. Good, um, good save. Yeah, no, I, I got this. Don't worry. Nobody knows. 10 out of 10 um, linguistics. <laughs> so you know how, like, we're milling around right now? At least for me, I'm not really trying at Rocket League. Like, I'm trying not to yeah. lose, but, like, I'm, I'm not tryharding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, most of my multiplayer games were just that. And Pavlov is one of the games that I want to try to get good at. Um, so what I've been doing is when I play the game is I'm focusing on shots. I'm looking at what angles people are holding and trying to hold a corresponding angle. Um, I'm, you know, intentionally looking at the height of where I'm aiming and where somebody would be so I can stop the alarm on my phone uh, and then eventually line up a headshot if I'm pointing in the right direction at the right time when somebody peeks the right wall. Uh, and it's been working. Um, I've literally just been thinking a little bit of, more about what am I doing at this very moment? And is that the best course of action right now, given the available information that I have? Um, and it's led me to make some better plays. Mm -hmm. um, like what do my teammates decide to to move because that's what you do in a multiplayer game. And I realized that the angle he was he was holding was no longer covered and more players were coming from that direction this game than the angle I was holding. Mm -hmm. So I decided to hold that angle for him while he milled around and got shot and then I got two kills out. Um so yeah, I'm I'm getting better. I'm hitting bullshit headshots and uh 
one of my favorite things happened. Uh, we were on one of the, the massive like 25 v 25 servers, but it was three in the morning and nobody was on. It was me and three other people. So we split into equal teams and we played Guardians duos 2v2 in office. And it was fucking great. Uh, cause there's two different bomb sites. You, you don't know where your enemy's coming from. There's a lot of like ratting around and roaming around quietly and trying not to get caught. And then when you hear gunshots, you know, oh shit, Bob just got shot or Bob's getting ganked. Uh, I need to go rotate this way, but I can't keep this place totally unguarded. Um, it's, it was really cool. Um, there's a lot of strategy that we put in that, that night. Um, it feels yeah. good. It feels good in any game like that to use, like, you're not just haphazardly finding yourself in situations as, oh, okay, we happen to, you know, aim better in this, in this situation or whatever, but you're actively yeah. using knowledge and strategy to consciously make decisions that lead to you having an advantage in, in winning that encounter or whatever. It's so satisfying. Yeah. In any game. Um, it was it was bullshit. We um we were losing. We were getting <laughs> stopped. It was like one to five, and it's the first to ten wins. Um and I said, hey, let's just do this thing and play safe. And then if we start firing, then we've got two of us there instead of us getting picked off one by one. Because they were always roaming together. So we decided, okay, we're gonna skip our heavy guns and get cheap guns, but a fuck ton of grenades. So if we see them, just fucking light the place up. And we were throwing everything. So we threw a bunch of smokes, and then they're marching through, like, quietly and, and very slowly, because they don't want to get popped. And uh, through the smoke, we just started chucking grenades. So six explosions later, they were dead. Uh, and then they had to change their tactics, because we changed ours. And it was a big, like, cat and mouse game uh, to try to get, you know, uh, to sneak out the win. We ended up getting it. We won like 10 to 8 uh, by the skin of our fucking teeth, but we did it. So nice. It That's awesome. Also, there was a hydrate in there, just in case everyone missed. Oh, shit. Good old burb. Running out of tea. Out of tea. But, um, yeah, so Pavlov, CS for Pavlov. VR. Um, yeah. I don't really have much else. Uh, Dota, just playing more Dota. They Fuck. already released a new patch for the patch. The <laughs> patch patch. The patch. A gotcha. patch for the patch. Everybody loves a good patch patch. And then I kept doing Hades. Excellent. Just that's all I got. It's fucking excellent. Um, anyone have anything else you want to talk about game wise? Mm. I was just gonna say Hades is so excellent. Apparently, IGN chose it as their game of the year. Yeah, that's called a segue. Oh, <laughs> a game of the year. Wow. Up what you were putting down. <laughs> that actually kind of shocks me. What? Yeah, me too. Oh, Hades. Hades. Yeah. Hades got, like, there were some bigger games. Granted, Cyberpunk was outside the window and wouldn't have got it anyway. But you have, like, Last of Us 2, Final Fantasy VII Remake were, like, two big ones that automatically jumped in my head. Ghost of Tsushima. Um, yeah, there were some big titles, and Hades pulled it out. As a roguelike game, that's I'm not used to these kind of games getting that kind yeah, of love. Exactly, like it's normally yeah. a cult following kind of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Super definitely. Giant's been killing it, man. Not not only did they develop a really good game, but they developed a really good game with an average amount of working hours in the video game industry. Like this is, they treated their employees right. They took vacations. They spent a long time like watching player feedback and modifying things, and uh, it's really it's something to behold yep i'm happy for him i'm glad they're getting the love because that game's fucking good mm -hmm. like that is one of the best roguelites i've ever played not recent ever like i'm really enjoying this which is i don't want to say weird but i'm usually on my roguelites a little more crazy this is good but it's, it's not isaac <laughs> it's not isaac it's not it's not um it's just something about isaac like Rogue Legacy yeah. either, or like uh, Risk of Rain. Like the synergies are good. And I've realized that like there's some really sweet fucking synergies. It's just, it feels different. And I think it's a good thing. It keeps the hack and slash feel alive. Like mm -hmm. even if you get really good shit, you're, it's still at its core a hack and slash. And it feels that way. And it feels good that way. Mm -hmm. I have never gotten a power up in Hades that made me stop playing the game. 
And I have absolutely gotten those kinds of power-ups in The Binding of Isaac, where, oh, yeah. oh hey, I walked into a room <laughs> oh, and everything no. melts. Cool, yeah. I'm no longer playing the game. I'm just walking from place to place. Or uh, there's the yeah, complete opposite. You get yeah. to rooms in Isaac where it's like in the second level, like, fuck, this is the item? Restart run. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, that's part of the appeal to me of Isaac, though, is that just I like the RNG in that game and how much it can affect your runs. Like yes. I, I enjoy that you can either get trash items and try to make something out of nothing, or you can just hit hit the lottery and basically easy mode stomp your way through the final levels with no problem. Like I love that there's such a dynamic in in the play. Well, and it can shift too. Like you can be having a run where you're thinking, oh, I'm going to be like just kicking ass with brimstone and this and that and this, and all of a sudden you pick up the guppy items without realizing. You hit the guppy transformation. And you're like, well, shit, this is actually what's going to win it for me, not what I was thinking the whole time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but um, that Hades might not sucks. apply to Hades. I mean, they're different it games, doesn't. but but yeah, just as an aside, I don't. Hades doesn't have a single ability that's like this is GG. Like even when I thought, or even when I had something that was borderline broke, I still didn't win. Yeah. Like even like, as broke as it gets, you'll still take damage if you're not careful. Yeah, yeah. There's there's never a power up in Hades, at least that I found that you can just stop playing and still win. You you still got to be good. Like, not excellent. Like, it's not the hardest game in the world, but you, you can't just, like, sit back and chill. Press W to win. Yeah. yeah. You always have to be <laughs> mindful of what's this enemy's pattern. Yeah. Which is nice. Which is the core of every hack and slash, but it's nice to see here. Yeah. Ooh. All right. And the All story. Right. It's got a story. It's a roguelike with a story that is told in, like, discrete increments, like a linear story. It's not like something in Isaac where you gotta pick it up in pieces, Dark Souls style. Like I mean, it's got a beginning, middle, and end. Even Isaac, I mean, that's not even much Isaac. Of a story. It's not really a, the focus of the game. Yeah, no. but th- this is absolutely a focus of it to the point where, like, in the game, there's little quips about it. Like, there was Zeus said something to me once, and it almost felt like a throwaway line. And then after the run, I'm talking to Dad, and oh shit, that wasn't a throwaway line. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's really really well done narratively if uh um, if you haven't picked up hades um i implore you sale. to do so it's we have a winner sale it's if you sale. haven't picked up hades let tom know he'll buy it for you yeah i'll, I'll just a little cheat just, code for you <laughs> okay, um other just news kidding. among us reaches rough quote unquote <laughs> roughly a half billion <laughs> monthly active users in November. That's a lot of That's users. absurd. I mean, it is a pretty low barrier to entry, too. But Turns out Free they're not the imposter, so they all quit simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> nah, congrats to them. Like, that, yeah. Yeah, that game's really fun. They took a premise that has existed for decades in internet forums and shit and video gamed it. In a really good way, in a really light way, and it just plays great. Let the players make their own fucking game, effectively. Yep. We set up the rules, you play the game, or make the game. Super good. Yeah, that's um, something special. Yeah. So, this is the last cast of the year, clearly. I mean, the year ends in five days, so. Thank God. Um, <laughs> I get a, wait, wait, before we get into this, huh? can I get yeah. a big old double barreled fuck you to 2020 <laughs> in its entirely, in its entirety? Just fuck the whole goddamn fucking year. Fuck this fucking fuck. <laughs> I mean, there's well, going to be good things that come of it, but yes. Either way, um, year's almost over, regardless of how many double barrel fingers you give it. Um, and in cliche, tropey fashion, people tend to make lists about this. We're not making a list. We've never made a list. We're not making a full list. But I will ask. We're not going to check it twice either. What was your favorite game this year that you played? Oh, Clarification, not necessarily a game that came out this year, just one that you played for the first time this year. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
so Adam Adam is causing me to rethink my list because I literally forgot about this game until he brought it up. <laughs> and I forgot it because I put so much time into it already. Yeah. Uh, Half-Life Alex. Um, it is the first truly successful AAA VR title that I've played. Um, it is easily the most immersive thing I've played. It was one of the scariest things I've played. It was one of the most heartwarming things I've played. Um, it's it's a goddamn Half-Life game, and I have waited 13 fucking years to say that. Um, <laughs> it's excellent. Uh, and not only is the core game excellent, but thanks to Valve and their obsession with making things moddable, uh, it's only getting better. There are maps out there which are rivaling the design quality of Valve's own levels. Um, people are building entire campaigns out of custom content now. Uh, and I'm going to be playing this for a very long time. If any of you were remember when Half-Life 2 launched, Half-Life 2 itself was good and nice in all the ways that Half-Life Alex is today, but Half-Life 2's legacy was about the mods. There are several AAA games and series that would never have started if they didn't start as shitty little Half-Life 2 mods first. Looking um, at you, Left 4 Dead. I, Portal? Left 4 Dead. The Stanley Parable portal, like, there's there's just, frankly, an unlimited amount of great Half-Life 2 games, or mods, that became full games. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future of Half-Life Alex. Um, my runner-up game is going to be uh, something that I've been grinding on for hundreds of hours this year, uh, which is Beat Saber, because, of course, it is. <laughs> So this year was the first year you've ever played Beat Saber? No, no, it? but this is the first year that I really got oh, serious. okay, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's a good pick. Okay. Like before, right. I wasn't tracking leaderboards. I wasn't keeping an eye on, like, scoring graphs. And, okay, well, how good did I do this week? And where's the progression for this song? And I'm going to throw this into practice mode for about an hour to get just this one part right. Um, there's a lot of grinding I did, and I feel physically better for it. Hi, Adam. What yeah. about you? Uh, I debated over this one. So if we're going by technicalities, I can't pick Tarkov. But because I started playing Tarkov at like the end of December last year, and the majority of my game time has been Tarkov this year, I mean, that would be, it seems like the logical pick. Um, All right. I think runner up if that didn't count, or if we're just going like single player games or something. Um, I think control would be mine. Um, yeah, you really I, talked highly. I about loved that. control, and it, it, it's not a perfect game for me. There are things I didn't like about it, but there was just so much that I did like, and there were so many little things that just added up to a whole of. You know, I was surprised that I actually beat that game. And my, my track record of beating games is really poor. So I, anytime I actually finish one, it's kind of a, a sign that I really enjoyed it. So it, it, it was everything from the, the actual combat was just so fun. Any game where I can use my mind to throw things at enemies is the most satisfying mechanic in any type of game I've ever played in my life. There's, it never got old. I got that, uh, that's like the first ability you get. And at the very end of that game, I enjoyed doing that just as much as I did the first time I threw a freaking forklift at somebody or something. Like it just, it, it was never not satisfying. And that's it was good. that, um, also cause it was the first game I played that had like ray trace lighting, which kind of blew my mind. Um, so everything from like the visuals, the, the actual style and the lore of the world that it's in. Like it's this really weird sci-fi sort of presented in like a film noir, but a little more goofy with like just enough humor to keep it interesting. Like there was just every little thing about that game was just, it would just scratch the itch, I guess, that I was looking for at the time. Good game. Highly recommended. Yeah, I've heard you actually recommend that to a few people. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that's at some point when it's on sale, I'll probably check it out. Because yeah. I'm a cheap bastard and it's a single player game. <laughs> That's fair. And it was, I think it was like the the game of the year edition with the DLC and stuff, I think it was twenty bucks over the autumn or winter sale or something. 
I think that's about as cheap as I've seen it so far. Yeah. What about you, Eric? Um, what's your um, what's the favorite game you've played this year? So it was a long year. And I know that because probably my favorite game I played this year, I almost forgot came out this year. Um, so like clearly like not counting Dota Rocket League because yeah, we all know everyone plays those long. Um I think Final Fantasy VII remake. Like that that was an excellent oh. remake. Um, I mean that that game had me captured for a week. Like I didn't play anything else. No Rocket League, no anything. It was just that game. Like there's a reason the PlayStation got moved downstairs because that fucking game. <laughs> um, I think my runner up would have been a game that surprised the shit out of me that I enjoyed it as much as I did, and that would be uh, Phasmophobia. Yeah, like, I that was a good dropped one. a lot of time really quick into that game. I you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's been any other game where I've had as long of a single session playing as we, me and you playing Phasmophobia that one day. That might be that, like 17 a, hours. <laughs> it was like, I think it was, Jesus. I thought it was 15 or 16, but it was a lot. And I, it's been a long, long time since I've played any game that long, even at my peak addiction, Rocket League, you know, whatever time period that was. I don't think I ever actually played for like 16 hours straight. Yeah, like that's taking me back to like Halo 2 like, LAN party over yeah. the weekend. Yeah, the I used to do that stuff when I was a kid, not as an adult. Yes, exactly. And that's what happened to me in that game. Yeah. And then like even when I stopped playing it, we got back into the new map and instantly went to like game breaker mode of like how does this work? How does this work? And just dissecting a game like I'm not used to dissecting. Like, I'm used to, like, looking for bugs, but, like, this was figure out the rules of a map <laughs> and instantly doing that, not, like, a month later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I think that game. would probably be my shocker and runner-up. Also, I noticed I played a lot of fucking new games this year. Like, that's new for me. I typically don't play a lot of new shit. I, don't I just pick up on in a few AAAs. Yeah. yeah, I think you guys both played a lot of new games this year. I think I played more new games this year than I normally play, but that still isn't that much. <laughs> but you guys, I think, I, think I feel I, like you guys played a lot. Or maybe. I usually play a lot of. Actually, that's. Go ahead. I was going to say, Tom, for, for yours, Tom, it's. Uh, I don't know if you've necessarily played a ton of new games, but I feel like you play a lot of games just in general, like a lot of different games each week. Like they might not be all games you're playing for the first time. But your your game list in our show notes is always just like it looks like a shopping list. Like it's got so much on it always. <laughs> Bananas, eggs, <laughs> B A N A N A S M. Boo. But yeah, like so, I uh, I played more new releases this year. Than I think ever. Like I had eleven games this year I played that came out this year. That's abnormal as fuck for me. Yeah. What uh? What's your your weird game of the year? Like, weird the game. Year, the weirdest shit you've played this year, but you actually enjoyed it. What would it be? Weird. Uh, you mean just hmm? What do you Whatever mean by you weird? Think? Weird as um, in atypical for my like, taste, or weird as weird? in like just a game is that it, makes you go like, whoa, what is this? What the? Yeah, like, is it just a weird fucking game? Is it a weird story? Is it just something that you don't ever play? Like, if I loved Madden, that would be my weird game of the year. <laughs> um, like, I got, like, substantially into a sports game somehow, or a racing game. Um, I don't know, what, whatever it means to you. Um, I, I got one ready for that. I think my weird game of the year would have been, like, Unrailed. So it's a train track lane game where you work with a teammate and you try to make a train as long as you can without it crashing and it's like weird resource management that you have to do while microing the track placement make sure people don't steal your shit it was it's really fun it was got oddly competitive hmm. it's a voxel game as well which i typically don't play a lot of yeah um what about you tom we'll yeah. give adam a little more time because yeah. i think he was a little sidetracked or side um my weird game of the year uh and it i can't say that it doesn't fit my standard genres because just about every almost everything fits my standard genres 
uh, Broken Reality, the non-violent first-person exploration Metroidvania vaporwave game, um, <laughs> is something that... I, and I, I usually don't do this, especially after just, like, these tiny indie hits. I started Googling around for the developer and looking at their Twitter. I'm like, are you guys putting out another one? Like, it's not like the game is the best thing in the world. And it's certainly not like at the end, I didn't hate it because I did. It went on for two hours too long. And those last two hours suck. But I got into like further into an entirely new music genre because of that game. Uh, I got exposed to a lot of different Vaporwave artists, which is really cool. Um, I watched videos on like a like breakdowns of not only the aesthetics that the game pulls from and the references it makes, um, but also like story breakdowns and other other bullshit that I look at as far as game design goes. Um, I really liked Broken Reality and I searched around uh, and it turns out, yeah, I'm hyped because Broken Reality 2 is announced, it's coming out uh, whenever it's done. So yeah, the tiny little indie house that made that uh, did a good job. It's not perfect, as I said before on the cast, but I did enjoy my time with it. And I haven't and stopped wife... thinking since. And your wife hates Vaporwave now. Yes, she does. She absolutely hates Vaporwave. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, uh, Omi, thank you for the sub. Yeah, thanks for the sub, Omi. All right, weirdest game. I can't narrow it down to one because I I just can't think of anything. I mean, a lot of the games that I liked the most this year were games that I wouldn't have really expected from me. Like I, like Cyberpunk, I played a lot more than I thought I would. That surprised me. I'm not an RPG guy at all. But then again, like I played Fallout Three and liked it, you know, a long time ago. And you know that I, that's not my normal wheelhouse, but I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, Tarkov, honestly, uh, my gaming background is. Before Rocket League came out, my gaming background was almost exclusively single-player games. Um, yeah. So Tarkov is like a culmination of a bunch of game genres that I'm either bad at or just don't care for. So like, it's a hardcore survival shooter. I'm not particularly good at shooters. I don't play a lot of survival games. Um, there's a lot of like tasks and quests involved. I'm not a big RPG guy, but when it, when you put it all together, you know, I really loved it. So that would be one. And then, like I said, Control earlier, just because the story and the world is pretty quirky and weird. So, and, and the, the actual definition of the word weird, that's probably the weirdest game I've played. <laughs> um, but no, those are the only ones that really come to mind. Um, I'm, unless I'm forgetting something. Everything else I played this year, I think, is I was expected to enjoy it some way or another. Yeah, I would say that you didn't have a lot of games that you said or you said you were playing. Where I'm like, why the fuck's Adam playing that? It's like, yeah, yeah, I would agree with your assessment. I guess buying Cyberpunk on day one was a little out of character for me. Buying the <laughs> game was, on day uh, one was out of character for both you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I I bought a AAA RPG on launch day. That's not something yeah. I do. And, uh, uh, and I guess the lesson learned there is even if you love and trust a company, um, <laughs> really, really wait for those reviews and don't just pick the first thing that fits your preconceived notion of how good the game is going to be and buy it like I did. I don't regret game it. Is but, uh, <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, that said, you guys have any parting shots before 2021? Uh, hold on, uh, hold on. This one, eh, it's a bad shot, but yeah. Oh, that was. I that thought was. you were about to chug your scotch for a second. <laughs> like, oh no, <laughs> my good written motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, that's no, funny. I hope 2021 is better for everybody than 2020 was. And even though year distinctions are a little bit arbitrary, um, oh yeah, I just hope things look up a little better for everybody. Yeah, distinctions are arbitrary between years, but this one will be remembered. Yeah. This year wasn't a year. There were decades that happened this year. <laughs> like, I feel 10 years older thanks to this fucking year. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Time's a tricky thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. All that said, I think it's time for rundown. Why do we always end on a downer? 
We did it again. Rundown? We oh, did it again. That is technically a down rundown. Oh, yeah, Tom made it a down. <laughs> I'll start or we'll start muting Tom for the last 60 seconds of the cast. Yes, that is a great What was idea. your favorite part of 2020? Phasmophobia with everybody. Getting together in a big ass group and hunting ghosts and and like simultaneously trying to complete objectives but not not being scared which like after after 30 hours none of us were getting scared by phasmophobia except like jump scares right but oh my god the first like 20 hours of phasmophobia (laughs) especially in vr like you're sitting there just like i don't know man it's a creepy fucking farmhouse do i really want to go inside i forgot something in the truck uh yeah (laughs) i'm gonna go check for ghost orbs (laughs) Uh, yeah the weak flashlights and the not scared ghost just orbs. checking for orbs just uh yeah looking looking at sanity guys that's it just uh making sure that everybody's good checks good. out everything's yeah. fine yep. oh shit well i better go read the board because they've got activity level four and i'm not walking in that so uh <laughs> yeah. it, it, i loved it i absolutely loved being in a group playing a multiplayer horror game which i have never seen work before mm-hmm. uh and i look forward to phasmophobia's future updates because goddamn that released out of fucking nowhere and was a wonderkind of great game design that really was a um, highlight i think yeah my highlight would probably not be gaming related but because of the pandemic and being lucky enough to have a job i could work from home i was able to actually go back home for a couple months during the summer yeah which was super nice so like uh if if you all from around in the summer you saw that adam and i actually did an in-person cast together like that's a weird duo tom and i used to do a lot of in-persons together (laughs) adam and i did an in-person together it was really nice that was good it was nice getting to see people because being on the other side of the country you kind of I don't want to say lose touch because especially in digital age, you don't lose touch, but it's nice to see each other face to face, real face. It's different. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a difference. Yeah. But yeah, that would probably be my high point. Just checking ghost orbs, guys. Don't worry about me. I'm here. <laughs> you got anything around. you want to add, Adam? Uh, Do honestly, sure? those two are probably my high points too. I mean, a combination of all of us, you know, I have a tendency to not play the games everybody else is playing in the Discord. Like, I kind of have uh, my own little bubble that I play games in sometimes. So it was cool that everybody kind of, including me, that I got to be a part of the hype train of a game with you guys and experience that together. That was really cool. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, Eric visiting was also super cool because I don't get to see you guys that often. Hopefully we can fix that once traditional travel and not driving for three fucking days cross country is a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Ah, oh, well, all that said, I think it's time we um we end this before Tom says another downer. Yes. So, yes. Yes, if, so if you're yeah. listening, tell us your 2020 you, has sucked. Tell us your favorite part about 2020. Tell us something good that happened or that you experienced or felt. And tweet it at us at 72PC underscore official. Or um, if you're watching this on our YouTube, comment on our YouTube page at 72 Pin Connector. And not some bullshit like, will you be my friend or check out my Instagram? Like, fuck you. <laughs> and I would love to find a way to cleverly tie in our Twitch, but it doesn't really work. So just, just if come you're to in our, our Twitch. Twitch just start spamming. Start spamming well, your general, favorite thing of 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um, right now, do it. We, we, we run our podcast on our Twitch, 72pinconnector.com, or 72pinconnector on Twitch. Just check there, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. There we go. I worked it in without Every it Saturday. being worked in. Every Saturday. We have a website, 72pinconnector.com. Has links to everything. Go get them. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, and Tom still hasn't yeah. muted his phone. I have not. Ever. Never. Not even once. Not like we um, have a pre-podcast run book that includes phone muting yeah but we never go through the run book anymore also to comrade buddy i know that's a good thing about this year but here's the secret you can make that every year tell people you don't want to travel during the holidays and you'll do it ahead of time it is so much better traveling during the holidays blows i don't want to travel ever okay yes but if you're going to travel to see family (laughs) doing it around the holidays just makes it worse yeah probably yeah I haven't traveled during the holidays, but I can imagine that would be a nightmare. 
our first two years, our first two years we did Christmas. Oh, was fucking ragged. Mm. So we said fuck that and started coming at the end of summer. It worked that so works. much better. Yeah. Every time I imagine traveling on Christmas, I just imagine it's that airport scene from Home Alone, and everybody's like <laughs> screaming and shuddling, and you you absolutely forget you have a kid at home. Like yeah. no one wants to. Do and then he basically murders two burglars. Yeah. And a house that's inexplicably huge for just two boys and a wife and a husband. You know what? You know what I would love. <laughs> they make a lot I of money. Okay, it. it's okay to have rooms. I would love a game like Phasmophobia, except you have to set up various residences like Macaulay Culkin, like Kevin McAllister, and attack burglars as they try to get stuff. The first good movie game, Home Alone. Yeah. Devising just traps. Be Phasmophobia and... with, with... Yeah, that, that would work. And, uh, and then there could be like paid DLC where instead of like a child character model, you're just adult Macaulay Culkin. And you're like fucking taller than everybody. It's like um, Rain Rainbow Six out. Siege without the guns. Yeah. So let's get out of here before we start making some really nasty <laughs> jokes. No! <laughs> All that said, catch us next year. Same place, same time. So, yeah. Till then, game on. See you, everybody. Bye.